moment of silence to keep our troops in our prayer that they come home safe. The notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Fielder Armwood? Here. Fielder Belante? Here. Fielder Kenny? Here. Fielder Polos? Fielder Tamaro? Here. Fielder Valenti? Here. Fielder Director Rios? Here. We have some recognitions. Uh, there are two recognitions tonight. Uh, the first is recognizing Joseph and Peter Conroy as they attain Eagle Scout status. And next is recognizing Dawn Brown on her retirement from Middlesex County Consumer Affairs, Consumer Affairs Weights and Measures. Is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, seconded by Fielder Tamara. Roll we'll call. Fielder Armwood? Yes. Fielder Belante? Yes. Fielder Kenny? Yes. Fielder Tamara? Yes. Fielder Valenti? Yes. Fielder Director Rios? Yes. Are any of them here tonight? No. Introduction of the 2016 budget. Uh, I just want to make one comment that it's been a hard work effort by all, all our department heads, all our employees, our finance office. Right. Commendable job by everyone. And I, I, I can't stress that enough that I think everyone uh, understands the complexity of putting a budget together and understanding the importance, and I'd like to also commend Freeholder Kenny on his chairmanship of that committee, and look forward to another great year. At this time, I'd like to also ask uh, Freeholder Kenny to say some a few words. Thank you, Director. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of uh, introducing the 2016 uh, county budget. Uh, the 2016 proposed budget represents a less than one cent increase in the uh, tax rate for our taxpayers is a total of four hundred and thirty nine point five million uh, dollars and is two percent higher than is two percent higher than last year's budget um, this this does not come about um, and this is what the uh, director was talking about just a second ago this does not come about because of a one-year plan uh, before me, the board members that were up here made the hard decisions um, to set the course so we could be here today and um, have a budget such as this being introduced. Through implementing fiscal responsibility, um, budgetary policies, debt service, surplus uh, policy, and our cash management policy have helped to save tens of millions of dollars for our county taxpayers and county residents. Uh, we've cut our debt by over um, a hundred by over hundreds of million well hundreds of millions of dollars over the past two years that um, that has helped us also maintain our triple-a bond rating which helps us get lower interest rates when we go out for financing we have maintained effective and efficient services for our taxpayers while we have been um, going about creating these budgets I want to uh, thank our finance office and all the employees up there because I know this starts in August, July, we start putting this budget together. I want to thank all the county employees, as the freeholder director did, because we put the budget plan out there. You uh, take the budget plan and put it to work, and through your hard efforts, we're able to come in with um, such such a budget. I want to also thank our CEO, Joe Peretti, who uh, works very hard um, the whole time uh, through this process and throughout the year to make sure that we stay on task as far as the budget plan goes. He also uh, works with the department heads to come up with other innovative ways that we can deliver services at um, a cost that's less than what we're doing it now. So thank you, Joe, for your uh, hard work into the, on this. And I want to introduce Joe Peretti, our CEO, for uh, further details on the hows and wheres and whats about this budget that we've come up with these uh, come up with these numbers. So Joe. Freeholders, everyone. 
Tonight we're introducing the 2016 county budget. In front of you freeholders, you'll see a packet, budget packet, which is comprised of the operating and capital budgets in summary. Uh, each freeholder was instrumental in developing these budgets, working with the department heads, and the details of the budgets will be emailed to you tomorrow. Uh, the total county budget was $439,544,000, as the freeholder stated. Um, <clears throat> that's an increase of exactly 2% over the last year's budget. That's our gross operating budget. Our total anticipated revenue are seventy million five hundred and eighty-one thousand, or a reduction of three point eight from last year. When we net the operating cost increases to the revenue decreases, we derive the amount to be raised by taxation, and that amount is eleven million four hundred fifty-eight thousand, or as the freeholder stated, less than a penny per household. Um, this budget is under the state mandated cap and is in line with recent budgets uh, over the last six years, which reflect an average increase of 1.3% per year. This average 1.3% increase is lower than the rate of inflation and the consumer price index over the same period. So now let's take a look at segments of the budget. The first one I'd like to speak <coughs> about is the salary and wages. The salary and wages increased by 2.285 million, which translates to 1.92 percent of over last year. It is consistent with all the uh, labor agreements throughout the end of the 2016. It maintains the same level of staffing throughout the year. And if we look at the last eight years, we can see that the salary have increased by less than 1%, by 0.74% on the average. As you can see, we experienced rel relatively savings in the first three or four years during the county's uh, restructuring re uh, the county government. And the, after, the last, after that period of time, during the last four years, we've leveled off at about 2%. The next item I'd like to speak about is other expenses. Uh, other expenses has increased by 2.1 percent, or 6.483 million dollars, while the grant section of the uh, of other expenses has stayed relatively flat. Um, the main drivers to our other expenses budgets are in front of you, and I'd like to speak a little bit about each one of them. Uh, these are items that increase our budget. Uh, first, we have our capital down payment increased by three million dollars. Um, this increase is consistent with a 5% down payment for our 2016 capital ordinances and is part of the uh, overall comprehensive 2016 capital budget of $48 million. The next item that increased the budget is the health insurance plan. This $2.48 million increase represents a 4.71% increase. But if we take a closer look and we compare it to other entities such as the state or the private industry averages, we can see that we were uh, below those for the year and as well for uh, the six-year period. Uh, we averaged 3.2%, 3.02% increase, while at the same time the, average, uh, the state averaged 8.32 and the private industry averaged 6.02% during the same time. Uh, this reduction to the rate of growth of health benefits uh, was achieved by working with the uh, Middlesex County Joint Health Insurance Fund Commissioners and as well as, as introducing initiatives such as the wellness program. In 2015, the county rolled out the wellness program for the entire workforce and uh, it's been a very successful program uh, with high participation rate. This programs like these will ensure that First of all, better health for our employees, obviously, but continuous savings for the county. So we maintain our health care costs to a manageable level. The next item in the order is state mental hospitals. Um, 
this item actually the increase was 1.807 million dollars, but the budget line item is 6.5 million, and it represents a chargeback to the county from mental patient. Uh, uh, patient, mental patient in state institutions. Uh, this increase is a part of a very disturbing trend over the last few years. As you can see, since 2014, <coughs> we've increased by 117 percent. And if we look all the way back to two, year 2000, uh, the increase is a stunning 879 percent, or an average of 51 percent a year. Now, in order, to, uh, this this budget item is uh, out of the control of the freeholders. So, in order to control these increases, we've engaged a consultant, uh, which is scheduled to finalize uh, the audit report in the next few weeks. Jerry McKenzie and the Department of uh, Community Services will begin implementing some of these recommendations during 2016, which should give us some relief next year. Um, we're projecting. The next item on the list is FICA and pension contributions. Now, just like the state mental health hospital, these are increases that are not, uh, are, are not discretionary for the Board of Children Freeholders. These are based on uh, the workforce, the level of the workforce. The next increase was technology investments. <clears throat> In 2016, we continue to provide financing for developing new technology. Technology such as our new financial system, we have an aging system, it's over 20 years old, it's time to replace it. Our weights and measure automated inspection system, uh, other systems such easy pay initiative, which would allow our taxpayers to pay for services directly online, services such as flu shots, parks reservation, and many other programs and services. Um, the other item, the next item is liability insurance. As you know, we're self-insured, and as part of the budget process, each year we look at that year's claims and their history, and we budget accordingly. This fund remained a stable for a number of years, but now it's time to increase it, and this modest increase to the fund will ensure that we have sufficient appropriations to cover the forecast's projection of costs. Under education, uh, that item is mainly the vocational schools uh, as an increase. And that's driven by, obviously, salaries and benefits, okay? Now, in order to offset some of these increases, we looked at uh, towards uh, operational efficiencies and savings. And here we have the biggest uh, savings in, uh, in our efficiency in our budget. Uh, we'd like to start with the real estate rentals. As you know, we have uh, embarked on a mission to shift reliance from rental properties and to and move our offices and departments into county-owned facilities. Um, not only does this optimize uh, efficiency, but also reduces cost. In 2015, we moved into this building on the fifth floor of the engineering office and the planning office. Uh, the Board of Social Services reduced their budget of $1.466 million. Uh, the budget for the Board of Social Services is funded by the federal government, the state, and the county. There's a formula. And it's based on the number of welfare recipients from the prior year. So due to the favorable economic conditions, we see a, a, lo a lower level of funding for the, the Board of Social Services. In 2015, we eliminated our reliance on a central distribu distribution center for our supplies. Uh, now we have our vendor ship our supplies directly to our offices. Uh, removing this metal man has reduced overhead costs, such as rent for the warehouse, salaries, and, and other costs. Uh, the next savings in efficiency is utility savings. Now, in utility savings, so it's, it's made up of three factors, main factors. Uh, it's the <coughs> continued construction of solar panel farms, such as the one on Route 130 complex and the one on the Utilities Authority. Um, obviously, as everybody knows, the gas continues, prices continue to fall, which is a direct relationship to our utility costs. And the third factor is clean energy investments. The county has invested in studies 
and energy efficient equipment in the last few years, and we've seen the results of it with lower energy costs. Our next area of savings is our adult correction center hospital stays. We've been able to shift uh, some of this cost, not all of it, but some of this cost to Medicare eligible uh, reimbursements. And then the next item is an item I'm very proud of, and it's the biggest one line reduction in our budget. It's our annual debt service payments. That's our, uh, our debt service to uh, finance capital projects. These savings are directly re related to our cash management and debt service strategies, along with a concentrated effort to lower the debt service over the years. The implementation of these strategies not only is essential to <coughs> lower the cost, but is also essential to maintain a AAA rating from the rating agencies. This area has been a, uh, been a focus point for the rating agencies each time we go out to the bond market and the reduction is expected to continue in the near future. While we're seeing this reduction in our debt service, we're maintaining the same level of expenditure and investment in our capital infrastructure. The next area of the budget I'd like to cover is the revenues. Uh, and the operating revenues, as a result of a downturn in the housing market in the third and fourth quarter of 2015, and our low expectation for 2016, we're forced to reduce our projections, uh, mainly due to the county clerk real estate transactions. Um, on the special item of revenues, the main reduction is an offset. It's not going to be a true reduction. It's an offset with the appropriation side, and that's the reduction of the warehouse. Those are the revenues that are coming in from the warehouse from each individual office. So it's pretty much a net wash. And the grants, as you can see, had a slight increase in revenue. This is a historical chart for our revenues. And we spoke about this in, in the past. In 2008, with the downturn in the economy, we, we started losing huge chunks of revenue. And um, we lost over 50% of our revenue, which translates to about $18 million. We started leveling off in 2011, and now we're seeing a slight dip. But we're confident that we're recovering from this uh, correction and should see improvements by the middle of next year. So that's a brief recap of our operating budget. Uh, I'd like to talk about capital budget next. In front of you is a capital budget request and as, a, as reduced by administrative reviews. It's a $45 million budget that continues to fund infrastructure such as road, bridges, parks, technology, and public safety requirements. I'm asking, we're still working on it, it's a work in progress. I'm asking the freeholders and the department heads review these budgets uh, and uh, we finalize <coughs> the budget, the capital budget, as we approach the adoption. A big part of the capital budget is a big part or overall debt strategy and policy. A policy which was <laughs> instituted in 2014. We were the first county in the state to establish a debt service policy and a, a surplus fund policy as well. And what it does, it formalizes the use of short-term, long-term, and cash management tools. It established an aggressive refinancing of higher cost bonds with lower, lower rate bonds for savings and it decreases the debt year over year, this, like we've seen in the slides before. All this enables the county to keep on funding critical projects that are needed. These are specific results of our debt strategy for 2016. As we spoke about, we reduced the debt service by $3.4 million, and more, and more as, as important, we reduced our total debt by $47 million last year. When you add that together with the reduction that we had in 2015, we can see it's a reduction of a total of $172 million over the last two years, which represented 25% of our debt. 2013 was the highest year, as shown on the chart. That year we had an overall debt of $702 million. And as you can see, we made quite a reduction to it in the past two years. 
this was done mainly by canceling old ordinance for completed projects and reappropriating old projects for new purposes as well. But this was not the only uh, advantage of a debt policy. Uh, we also refinanced, we went out to the bond market aggressively over the last five years and including we're adopting, uh, we're introducing an ordinance tonight for an additional $30 million of refunding. So including that $30 million, over the last five years we have refunded over $200 million for a savings to the county of $12.2 million. Now this debt policy is very important for us to maintain a AAA. And what a AAA rating allows us to do is it allows us to pay less money for our interest. And this is gonna become vitally important over the next few years, which we're predicting that interest rates will go up. We estimate that by having this AAA, the county has saved over $35 million over the last 15 years, which is quite an achievement. That's $30 million, $35 million we wouldn't have had if we had a lower rating. Another important policy that I mentioned before is a surplus policy. And this also was uh, implemented in 2014. Uh, we were the first county in the state to do so. This policy was necessary at the time to maintain a triple bond rating. The agencies, rating agencies told us so. And the philosophy is easy. Use surplus only to increase the fund and don't use any surplus to close any of the budget gaps, which included eliminating any one-time revenue which should not be occurring. So over the last five years, we made a conscious effort not to have one-time revenues in our budget. <coughs> we use zero surplus in our budget to balance the budget, and we're the only county to have done so for an unprecedented five year in a row in the state of New Jersey. Um, all the counties use surplus in their budget. Uh, we, we started a trend, and we'd like to continue. Now, a few years back, the rating agency uh, had us commit to increasing our fund and we had a five-year goal of increasing the fund, our surplus fund, to a $40 million level, which translates to roughly about 10%. That's the goal they were looking at at the time, 10% of your previous year's budget. The fund this year grew by $42 million, and we're very near to approach the 10% of the last year's gross budget. Um, the future for the fund, well, we're gonna continue on growing the, the fund in order to maintain a AAA rating, which will ensure that the county pays low interest. And also another added benefit is that ensures, and the reason why the rating agency wants us to have uh, a high surplus fund is because that's how you can ensure to have uh, withstand economic times where your funding is low. So that's why they look for a sound financial county. If we look at a slide, the next slide, it's very telling. The blue line represents <coughs> the amount of money used for the fund to close that year's budget gap. And as you can see, we started reducing our, our dependency on that in 2009 and stopped completely for the last five years. And the green line symbolizes our surplus fund level, which has grown exponentially. Now, our policies were a big part of that, but what also uh, allows us to save those type of, uh, of, uh, those type of funds for the surplus is there are operating efficiencies. You know, we're saving money through our operations and the money's going directly to the surplus fund. So that's the presentation of the budget for 2016. We're hoping to adopt the March, March 3rd. We'll have a, a public hearing that time. I'd like to thank all the freeholders for the support, in particular freeholder director Rios and chairman of the finance department, Freeholder County, thank you. Um, obviously, all the department heads, my staff worked very hard in the last uh, few months on this. I'd like to recognize Gabe Cookie, he's here this morning, he's the assistant controller. And Isam Abbas is my budget director, and uh, he did a great job this year. Not only did he have the responsibility that he has each year to uh, build the budget, but he also automated the whole state budget reporting uh, uh, document, which is a huge undertaking, so I'd like to thank him as well. Thanks, Isam. Are there any questions? Any questions from the freeholders? Thank you, Joe. Thank you.
this time the clerk will read resolution number 16-56 by title only. Authorize increase in 2016 tax levy cap limits and establishment of a cap bank NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14 to be introduced by a 3.5% by 3.5% in the amount of $8,394,804.81. Authorized public hearing to be held on March 3rd, 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Freeholders Meeting Room. At this time, I'd like to open up the public portion on resolution number 16-56 only. Is there anyone from the public that would like to make comments on this? Motion to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Freeholder Tamaro, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adopt resolution number 16-56 only? So moved. Second. Motion to adopt by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamaro. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. At this time, the clerk will read the summary of the proposed budget. <clears throat> total grant appropriate total of general appropriations for 2016 is four hundred and thirty-nine million five hundred forty-four thousand dollars. For 2015, is four hundred thirty million seven hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars. Less anticipated revenues for two th 2016 is seventy million. $581,000 for 2015 is $73,266,000. Amount to be raised by taxation, county purpose tax for 2016 is $368,963,000. For 2015, $357,505,000. Is there a motion to introduce the 2016 budget. Motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder <coughs> Director Rios? Yes. Annual budget of the County of Middlesex for the fiscal year of 2016. Be it resolved that the following statements of revenues and appropriations shall constitute the county budget for the year 2016. Be it further resolved that the summary of said budget be published in the Home News and Tribune in the issue of February 13, 2016. The Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex does hereby approve the following as the budget for the year 2016. Notice is hereby given that the budget and tax resolution was approved by the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Middlesex on January 21st, 2016. A hearing on the budget and tax resolution will be held at the County Administration Building, New Brunswick, New Jersey, on March 3rd, 2016, at 7 o'clock p.m., at which time and place objections to be at which time and place objections to said budget and tax resolution for the year 2016 may be presented by taxpayers or other. Correspondence. Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. Is there a motion to accept the correspondence? Second. Uh, motion, I'm sorry. <laughs> Second the motion. Mm -hmm. Motion by Freeholder Valenti. Seconded by Freeholder Tamara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, is there a motion to approve the previous meeting minutes? So second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder Tamaro. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Belante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. This time we have ordinance. Uh, the clerk will read ordinance number 425 by title only. Refunding bond ordinance of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey. One, providing for the refunding of certain outstanding general obligation bonds of the county to achieve net present value debt service savings. And two, authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $30 million aggregate principal amount of general obligation refunding bonds of the county to effect such refunding and appropriating 
The proceeds, therefore, and authorizing the public hearing to be held on Thursday, February 4th, 2016, at 7 o'clock p.m. and publication thereof. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 425 on first reading? Motion. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, second by Fielder Tamaro. Roll call. Fielder Armwood? Yes. Fielder Belante? Yes. Fielder Kenny? Yes. Fielder Tamaro? Yes. Fielder Valenti? Yes. Fielder Director Rios? Yes. Reports of Freeholders. Freeholder Ken Armwood. <coughs> Thank you, Freeholder Director. From the Business Development and Education Department. President's Day celebration at Old Town Village. The Middlesex County Office of Cultural Culture and Heritage will be celebrating President's Day at East Jersey Old Town Village in Piscataway. This free program will be held at the village from 1 to 3 p.m. on Sunday, February 21st. Peyton Dixon of the American Historical Theater will portray President Theodore Roosevelt. Registration is required. Call 732-745-3030, extension 310. Text CULTURE to 56512 for mobile access to the arts, history, and virtual tours. Master Gardeners of Middlesex County invite you to take part in the Great Backyard Bird Count. This free event will take place on Saturday, February 13th at Davidson's Mill Pond Park, located at 42 Riva Avenue in South Brunswick, starting at noon and 2.30 p.m. with guided tours. Beginning with birders and experts are, beginning birders and experts are encouraged to attend with master gardeners leading guided tours with count sheets. These sheets will be filled in during the tour and then collected and entered into the Cornell University database. This event is held simultaneously with the Audubon Society and Cornell University Lab. Please bring your binoculars and field guides and dress appropriately for outdoor hiking. Please RSVP to evans at asop.ruckers.edu. The rain date will be Sunday, February 14th. Job seekers, please visit the county website, search hiring events at the Middlesex County One Stop Career Centers. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Freeholder Director. Thank you, Freeholder Armin. Freeholder Deputy Director Carol Belante. Yes, Director. Um, as we all know from the weather forecast, we're expecting a lot of snow. Um, and I guess it's going to happen on Saturday, which you'll all be home. Stay home. Be safe. Don't be sorry. It's a good time to catch up on reading, watching television, or drinking wine. <laughs> Whichever you want. <laughs> but and seriously, um, don't don't overdo anything. It, it really is a great time just to stay home and wait till our wonderful parks and road department, who has always they do a great job getting the snow off the streets, and wait until the streets are clear. That's my report. Thank you. Freeholder Charlie Kenny. I had my time earlier. Thank you. Thank you. Freeholder Tamaro. Thank you, sir. Um, as uh, Carol Barrett said, as we get ready for the blizzard of 2016, uh, let's not forget about our wonderful county park system. Uh, when the snow piles up, sledding opportunities are available at Donaldson Park in Highland Park and Thompson Park in Monroe. If sledding is a bit too exciting for you, cross-country skiing may just be your pace. The Farm Road Trail and, and Davidson Mill Park Pond Park offers a beautiful wintry trip ideal for beginners, while the Middlesex Greenway in Metuchen, Edison, and Woodbridge provides three and a half mile stretch of a great trail, which is not always flat, but it's a nice trail, along the old Lehigh Valley Rail Corridor. And if snowshoeing is what you prefer, try the Tamarack Hollow Preserve in East Brunswick for some quiet and solitude, or the Thompson Park Conservation Area in Monroe for some more um, exciting and, tr and um, challenging terrain. And let's not forget about the Roosevelt Skating Rink uh, in Edison, where we offer skating sessions, birthday party options, and individual lessons at the outdoor rink. And it's really nice to go by there. I went by there Friday evening, and the place was packed. So, uh, you know, our residents are really uh, enjoying that. And I also am proud to announce that this evening that Jesus Christ Superstar 
won a Broadway World New Jersey Award, named the best production by local theater, and the nominations were, were submitted by readers through the uh, broadwayworld.com. Uh, so congratulations to Jesus Christ Superstar, to all uh, people who are part of that production and our productions that plays in the park. Uh, if you've never had an opportunity to visit or go to plays in the park, you're missing uh, Broadway, um, Broadway production plays that are very cheap. Um, you, you could never get a better play for that cost, let me tell you that. So uh, enjoy the snow this weekend and um, have a safe one. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Freeholder Blanquita Valenti. Thank you, Director. From the Department of Community Services, on Wednesday, January 27th, the annual point in time survey will be conducted in Middlesex County's 25 municipalities. This survey collects information on the number of homeless people in the county, their particular needs and the reasons for their homelessness. The county then uses this information to best direct future prevention and service efforts. To increase the survey's accuracy and offer direct help to the homeless, Middlesex County will once again incorporate Project Homeless Connect into the process Project Homeless Connect sets up two sites in the county, one at Elijah's Promise of Kitchen in New Brunswick and the other one at Cathedral CDC in Perth Amboy. Homeless people can go to these sites between 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. to complete the survey, connect with case managers, and receive information on available services. Haircuts, flu shots, and health screenings will be available, and food, clothing and hygiene kits will be distributed. Representatives from the VA, the County Veteran Services Program, Community Hope and Soldier On will be on site to connect homeless veterans and veterans at risk of homelessness with needed housing services. Trained volunteers will also conduct street outreach to places where homeless people tend to congregate. The Board of Chosen Freeholders is encouraging residents to support the point in time survey by donating unwanted yet usable coats of all sizes. New gloves, scarves, blankets, socks, underwear, thermal wear, and toiletries are also needed. Please contact 732 745 4139 for additional information on the survey or to donate items for distribution, and that's my report, Director. Thank you, Phil Valente. I just have a few comments to make. I, uh, I attended the State of the State address by the Governor in Trenton. I was there to witness the uh, swearing in of the General Assembly members, and of course the Governor's speech on the State of the State. I can proudly say the State of Middlesex County is a lot better than the State of New Jersey. That's right. <laughs> and it's a, a, uh, a well, documented uh, example right here that Joe Peretti just did with our budget and how we've been able to maintain the level of services that we provide for our residents, whether they're from children or to senior citizens. So that's something that we all, as employees, uh, can feel, feel very proud of. <coughs> uh, I attended a strategic planning meeting this past week with our department heads looking for 2016, where we're, what direction we're going, all the initiatives that our department heads have and, and how they implement them. Obviously there's times that we as freeholders come up with the grandiose plans or new programs that we want to uh, create, but it's our department heads and our employees that actually execute those uh, new programs or initiatives, and I thank them all for that. I attended the State of the College address uh, President Joanne LaPerla Morales gave a great address on the progress from 2015 and looking forward to 2016. Uh, the um, science lab is under construction and it looks like it's going to be right on schedule, maybe even early uh, ahead of schedule. The uh, student center is uh, moving along real fast as well, and obviously the weather has a factor in construction, but we've been pretty lucky uh, up to this point. And of course she unveiled her strategic plan for 2016 on how we can come up with more programs or how they are coming up with more programs to better educate our students. And we have a wide variety of students that uh, do well 
and go and further their education to even Ivy League schools that they after they leave uh, Middlesex County College, which we all freeholders are very proud of that college. And lastly, I had a meeting with uh, our department heads in preparation for the storm that will be hitting us this weekend. Uh, Freeholder tomorrow was there as well. We're well prepared. Uh, we don't expect a storm like Superstorm Sandy. Hopefully, it never we never experience that again. But our streets and roads, and our parks, and all our employees, whether, and, and essential employees, uh, whether it be the hazmat whether it be essential services uh, for Meals on Wheels or MCAT services. So everybody plays an important role in this part in public safety and in health for all our employees. So rest assured that the most important thing to do is if you're going to get, you need things, get them early, get them today, get them tomorrow, and uh, stay indoors. Try not to uh, get out in, uh, in the roads because God forbid something happens, you know, you're not only endangering your life, you're endangering law enforcement or emergency medical services uh, lives that could respond or may need to respond to someone else. So stay indoors as much as you can. And that concludes my report. Okay. Mr. Kelso, are any resolutions to be added? There are none. Any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Any resolutions to be held? There are none. Any resolutions <laughs> to be voided? There are none. At this time, I open the meeting to the public on any resolutions listed on the agenda. Mm. Please state your name for the record, your address, and you have five minutes. Good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Charles Craddeville. I'm from New Brunswick. I'm the editor of NewBrunswickToday.com. I wanted to ask, um, uh, first of all, when was the when was the freeholder board first presented with the agenda for this meeting? When was this? This was uh, Monday or Tuesday? Monday. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I don't check the county website every day, but I believe I checked on Tuesday and I, I didn't see any agenda. Is it possible in the future that the uh, you know, administration could post the agenda for the meeting at the same time it's, it's given to the freeholders? Well, I think, uh, I, I don't know if we can do that. Can we, Mr. Kelso, until it's adopted? Yeah, let me, let me answer. Uh, the agenda is a working agenda right up until the six o'clock meeting now on Thursdays. So in many instances, it's not complete until then. Uh, though we provided copy to the Board of Freeholders for their review, uh, until they finish reviewing it, and at that point in time, then it will become available to the public. And that usually takes place sometime in the Thursday time frame now. Now, so this is a change in 2016? Is no, the that's why it's always been essentially. In, in this case, it was Monday, but now that we bond it is to Thursday, that's the challenge. Right, so there's no more Monday meetings? No. Right, we're going to have agenda and public on the same night. And we're going to try to do, since we've combined that, we're going to try to find ways of hopefully providing the agenda a little bit earlier than it is right now. So we're working towards that. So for the next meeting, will the agenda be available more? I, I mean, I, I got this agenda 45 minutes before the meeting. Okay. I mean, is it, that's not acceptable. There's, there's 20 pages of things here. Uh, when will, uh, if you say you're working towards it, when will the next agenda be posted? Will it be posted 24 hours before the meeting, 48 hours? 72 is usually what uh, most government entities promise. And I think that's probably a big part of the reason that you used to have the agenda meetings on Mondays. We will, we will attempt to work at least a minimum of 24 hours prior to, but at this point in time, we'll have a better idea now that we've moved these, these two meetings together. Okay, thank, thank you for that. I really I think it's in the interest of uh, transparency and public en engagement involvement to, to, to share the information as soon as possible with the public. You and you got a great website. Call the office and, and make a request for any information that you see here that you don't have any time during the meeting. You're more than welcome to. Thank you. I, I usually like to do the research before you voted for the oh, things. Um, and that's just, just the way that I think most people uh, think is the right way to do things, is to ask the questions before you've already passed the thing. So I, I, I just, um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll move on to my questions about the individual resolutions. Uh, I think I made my point. 16-22-R uh, is a contract with Kelso and Bradshaw. Um, I assume this is the same Mr. Kelso who is uh, your, your attorney. Can you tell me why you're also hiring his firm? We've done it in the past, and we're very confident with this, his, uh, his law office's professionalism 
and his law office's response and advice to us. So we, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay. So can you tell me um, what you get from the law firm that you can't get from Mr. Kelso himself? He's a, he is a paid, I believe, nearly $200,000 a year. He gets benefits. He works for the county. Uh, as an employee, what, uh, why is there a need to also hire this, this firm? Charlie, as you know, the contracts, the same contract that's been, as I explained to you last year, there are, there are differential services that are provided by outside counsel in a whole myriad of, of matters. Uh, in this particular case, this contract provides for a lot have to do with the issuance of bond opinions, uh, work associated with Roosevelt Hospital, which is a, a unique and outside uh, uh, venture that's not typically in the in the mainstream of county government. Uh, there's also uh, work associated with any extraordinary matter that the board would consider that uh, that my firm has the ability to handle because of our knowledge of the county. Uh, and uh, there are just like with my firm. There are other firms who provide specific services that are considered to be outside services, like labor counsel and, and uh, environmental prosecution. There are a number of different things. The board, and I'm, I'm pleased and gratified, has, has seen my firm as being uniquely suited to be able to handle the services that are in there, and I'm happy to do so. And again, I'm only doing it at $135 an hour, which is the same rate you asked about last year. By the way, if the county wants to hire me for $135 an hour, I'm there. You can hire That's me. That's time. Um, time. Uh, Thank you. If uh, respectfully, may I ask, could I could I have a little more time, just because this is Thank 19 you. pages, time is up. and 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 I'm I believe the only one Anyone who wants to speak on this. Could I respectfully, please? Could I have just Your time is up. a little extra time? Anyone else in the public? Looks bad. Is there a motion to close? So moved. Portion? Second. Motion by Fielder Tamaro. Second by Fielder Valente. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Kelso's. Do we have anybody that has to vote separately? I have one. Um, 1624R. Anyone else? I think that's it. Okay, Mr. Kelso. Uh, yes, Fielder Director, a motion would then be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution number 16-20 through 16-171 excluding resolution 16-56 which was previously voted upon and resolution 16-24 to be voted upon separately. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Freelder Valente, seconded by Freelder Tamara. We'll call. Freelder Armwood? Yes. Freelder Bolante? Yes. Freelder Kenny? Yes. Freelder Tamara? Yes. Freelder Valente? Yes. Freelder Director Rios? Yes. And now, uh, Freeholder Director, it would be appropriate to consider Resolution 16-24, excluded by Freeholder Valente. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Present, not voting. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. <coughs> this time I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. State your name for the record and your address, and you have five minutes. Once again, Charlie Craddaville, New Brunswick, uh, NewBrunswickToday.com. Uh, can you tell me how much money Kelso and Bradshaw is going to make from this contract? Is there a not to exceed amount, or is it unlimited? The answer is no, and if you want specifics, you make an Oprah request. So you don't know how much? It's an Just hourly rate the, for service. It's an hourly rate as, as needed. So, so there is no limit on the top. It could, it, it could be a limitless amount of money that, that the Kelso firm gets. There's no limit. Usually there's a not to exceed. Next question. So there's not a not to exceed. It's a limitless amount of money. Do you know how much the firm made last year off this contract? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Could you ask Mr. Kelso if it's a you know, ballpark figure? Is it five figures, six figures, seven figures? I actually don't recall. If you want to send an email request for that, we'll provide it to you. Okay. I will do that. Um, I uh, so much things on this agenda. It's amazing that you would limit the public time to speak on it. Um, can you tell me about 16-45R? Uh, what is the nature of this amendment to the lease on the Skyline Tower, the Skyline lease? Was there Tom? 
the, the, the skyline lease is the building that is now the residential, used to be the former administration building. When the building was developed, it was developed very similar to the way this building was developed, where there was a ground lease and a master lease from which the housing authority acted as the redevelopment agency for the city of New Brunswick and entered into a long-term lease to develop the residential component as well as the office component which held the appellate division of the Superior Court. The, at the time that the lease was done, there was a reference to the leasehold mortgagees and they referenced the two specific mortgagees that existed at the time. This amendment simply changes the reference to the mortgagees to any leasehold mortgagee uh, since the original mortgagees were just limited to the two that actually funded the, 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 the project. So all that's really happening is it's allowing the, the entity that operates and owns those residential components to refinance and change whoever their, their lender is. Okay. 16-50R, um, <clears throat> microwave radios in uh, 75 Bayard Street, there Bayard Street, that's this building, 711 Jersey Avenue, and uh, the Wicks Tower, I'm not sure where that is. Can you tell me wh what are these microwave radios and what are they for? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, as we continue to connect all of our facilities, our data centers here in this building, and we're using wireless technology to be able to uh, have our employees work through business applications, which is at a cheaper rate than having to go through T1.5 or other capabilities. So by having wireless capabilities, reduce the cost of uh, telecommunications, while at the same time providing access to our employees to business applications that need to do their job. Thank you. And the Wicks Tower, is that it's one Wood of the towers Woodbridge? That, or? It's in New Brunswick. It's one of the oh. towers that we have uh, some of our equipment on. And uh, the, the equipment is there based on the studies that we do to make sure it has the proper line of sight to access all of our facilities. Okay, 16-57, uh, oh, well, I'm sorry, I skipped that one since there's a time limit here. This is really uh, frustrating. So this one's right in my neighborhood here, 16-70R. Uh, what are the modifications that are happening to French Street and Patterson Street? And um, uh, what is the county going to do about the other intersections on French Street, the ones that are super dangerous? I'm talking about Harvey Street, um, where, uh, you know, there's no crosswalk for more than 200 feet on a super heavy pedestrian area. Is this going to address that problem, or is this only going to address the area near Robert Wood Johnson Hospital? This will be modifying the existing signal at Patterson Street and French Street. Uh, the other intersection you're talking about will... We can't strike right now, but in the spring it'll be on the, the strike we strike right? But there are no crosswalks to begin with. So will you add crosswalks at Harvey Street and at Prospect Street? If they are deemed justifiable and needed, they, they, they can be added, yes. Okay, and who's going to deem whether they're justifiable? They, they will be looked at. There is there's a provision in the uh, governing document that actually provides and advises against the overuse of crosswalks. So we try to be prudent in our use of that. I understand. This is an issue I've brought to the county and to the city numerous times. Please don't wait for someone to be hurt or killed. Um, these are intersections where there's a huge pedestrian volume. People are crossing the street whether you put the crosswalk there or not. So um, I'm warning you, please do something quickly about this situation on French Street. And I hear my time is up. I, I'll leave Thank you with you. this question about 1677R. If you care to answer it, you're, you've got underground storage tanks that are being removed from Donaldson Park, uh, Middlesex County Park. And can you tell me, can you tell the people of Highland Park whether they should be concerned about these underground storage tanks and what you're doing with the, store, the uh, storage system there? Do you care to tell the people of your community about that? Uh, hello, uh, my name is Adil Ahmed, live in North Brunswick, 1321 Tupelo Court. Uh, I submitted a petition a year ago with about a couple hundred signatures, and I sp spoke to the engineer, Mr. Walner, about a year ago about Finnegan's Lane, it's a county road. Uh, a lot of traffic congestion, a lot of citizens there had a meeting with the mayor and the township council of North Brunswick about safety on the road, very high speed limits, a lot of students walking along the road to go to school, a lot of senior citizens walking up and down Finnegan's Lane, who go shopping. It's become a huge safety hazard, and I just wanted to know if there were any updates 
um, on that road. Um, the township doesn't seem to know. That's why I came today. Thanks. We've initiated a study to look at the road from 27 <laughs> to Route 1. It's in its early stages of data collection, basically. Okay. And is there anything that we need to do to follow up? Like, when do the results get published? How do we know? I don't think so at this time, other than we, we will contact you when it becomes appropriate, and we will contact the municip both municipalities since the road is on the border. Okay. Now, does the township need to work with South Brunswick on this? It seems like the township's operating in a silo, but on the South Brunswick side, there aren't any radars, but North Brunswick does have a radar. So should I contact South Brunswick and ask them if they could put up a radar to make it a more of an effective sort of test or what can be done on the county level to ask South Brunswick to monitor that road? We could, we could, we could ask uh, South Brunswick to, that you came here and let them know that it's a concern and we can notify them to, to see if they can do traffic uh, control there. Okay. Is there anything that we need to do to hear back? There, there's a meeting, but then there's a blog about seven months ago, but if there's an update, if you guys can like write something in the county paper and the Brunswick Post to give an update on the road, that would be really helpful because a lot of folks read that. Right, said we're in the data collection and as we move forward, we'll give you a notice of where we are. Okay, great. Thanks. Should I follow up with you? Can I get you an email yes. address? Yes. Great. I'll give it. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the public? Move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Field of Tamao, second by Field of Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Second. Motion by Field of Valente, second by Field of Tamao. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned.